We are turning now to food waste, which has a major impact on our climate. So according to a United Nations report, we're wasting almost a billion tons of food globally each year, and most of it is perfectly edible. I recently spoke with Matt Homewood, an award-winning food waste campaigner from Copenhagen. He's on a mission to end supermarket food waste in Denmark and beyond. Matt, when we talk about food waste, there was an interesting analogy that was made. Uh, one of the UN agencies, the Food and Agricultural Organization, says that if food waste was a country, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas emitter behind China and the United States. How did we get to this point where we waste so much food? You're right. It's an astonishing statistic. And if you actually convert that into global greenhouse gas emissions, we're talking 10% of annual emissions come from food waste. Now, of course, it is a complex problem. We've got global supply chains. So from farm to fork, we're talking about 40% of food waste. Um, it's an astonishing situation. And I started this work three years ago by starting uh, an Instagram page called An Urban Harvester, which focused specifically on supermarket food waste, which actually isn't the biggest problem, but it's the one I had access to. And that's why I've used that supermarket food waste as a prism, as a tool to explore wider issues of food waste from farm to fork. Now, let's talk about that. Uh... You are an urban harvester, sometimes that's very derisively referred to as a dumpster diver, but you regularly retrieve perfectly edible food from uh, waste bins or dumpsters at supermarkets. Uh, what have you found? What have I not found is more the question. I mean, pizzas, all sorts of fruit and vegetables, uh, basically everything you find in the store, between 1 and 5% of that ends up in the dumpster. And from an environmental and social perspective, I've started focusing more and more on meat and dairy because, you know, meat and dairy use 83% of global farmland, yet only produces 18% of the calories. So meat and dairy is a very inefficient way of using our limited uh, resources on planet Earth. And so to find that much meat and dairy in the dumpster is seriously disturbing. So that's why I focus on that so much. But it is quite mind-blowing what, what one might find in there. And it isn't just perishable products. That's what's most disturbing. You can find a lot of shelf-stable products like cans of tuna, for example. And actually, the production of meat and dairy uh, is itself uh, bad for the atmosphere, isn't it? Absolutely. Meat and dairy... Um, just because of basic, basic biological systems, converting plant matter into animal matter is a very inefficient uh, way of production. Uh, but of course, it's part of human history, so that's something we have to deal with. But wasting meat and dairy is absolutely unacceptable. And that's why I focus on that so much. And when we see supermarkets wasting that meat and dairy on the scale that they do, sometimes without even a discount sticker on those products, then we know something has gone wrong. And that's why I campaign so hard to try and raise public consciousness about this problem. And once we get enough people on board, we can try and campaign governments to start placing uh, attacks, in a way, on, on food waste. Because we know that from a social and environmental perspective, it's a massive problem. Uh, so say, for example, a supermarket paid $50 per ton of food waste for that disposable. If that was suddenly increased to 500 or say $5,000 per ton, you'd see supermarkets radically change their overstocking practices and especially hoarding. Uh, because, for example, I found 157 packets of bacon which had passed their use-by date, but they had no discount stickers. And why is that? Uh, because basically the, the price, the, the cost of that waste is too low. So from a cost-benefit analysis from the supermarket, essentially it pays to waste. And that's what we need to change. Right, now you've done something about this, Matt, but how can we as individuals reduce food waste? So, yeah, I don't focus on consumers as much uh, as some other people do, organisations, and that's because consumers essentially do waste a lot of food, and that is a significant problem, but it's very irrational, because when consumers throw food away at home, they're literally throwing out their hard-earned money. But there are many things we can do. Uh, so from government's perspective, we can inc improve the educational resources at hand, get e home economics back on the agenda. Uh, we can use our fridge better, our food stocking, essentially, and preservation uh, 
in the kitchen and larder. Uh, so there are many things uh, that we can do as individuals, um, but I focus more on the commercial aspect because we know that these business models are across an entire nation quite profitable. And it's that insidious behavior that I think needs uh, acting upon. And, you know, governments have many instruments at their disposal. They can use tax breaks, they can use taxes to, of course, shift that behavior. So we can increase uh, discounting practices, we can increase charitable donations. Uh, where you are in, the, the, in uh, Washington, D.C., the USA actually, believe it or not, is one of the great food wasters on this planet from a supermarket perspective. But we have federal legislation called the Bill Emerson Act introduced in 1996, which minimizes liability for all supermarkets and the nonprofits who get that food. So really in the USA, there should be no supermarket food waste. But after 25 years, we still only see 20% of food uh, donated to, to charities, even though 35 million US citizens are food insecure. So it's the great paradox of, of the US food system as well as the global food system. You've made a presentation to the COP26 conference in Glasgow, in Scotland. What was your message to them? So yes, I've delivered a talk at the COP26 uh, where my message is, is quite simple, really. I focus on supermarket food waste because that's the evidence I have at hand. I focus on Denmark, essentially, retracing the story of how I got to this stage. And then through social media networks, I have received and been inundated, quite frank frankly, by other dumpster divers across the Western world who have shared with me their work. So from Germany to Finland to Australia to the USA, I've got photos uh, demonstrating this absurd supermarket food waste. So we'll be going on a global journey. And then I want to talk solutions. There are many market-based solutions like Y Waste or Waste Less, which offer, for example, dynamic pricing um, solutions or Throw No More, which di digitalizes reduced products. But these require investments from supermarkets. And so that's why I believe we need a more systemic solution uh, from governments. So that's why I want to talk about legislative solutions. So, for example, that tax I talked about earlier to increase the cost of wasting this perfectly edible food or to incentivize charitable donations, because, quite frankly, turning this perfect food into biogas or uh, waste for energy, as they call it, is very inefficient. For example, a ton of tomatoes will only retrieve 0.75% of the total energy that went into growing those tomatoes in the first place. So it's important to be very clear with our thinking when we, talking, uh, when we talk about food waste and the best solutions we have at hand. Prevention will always be the best course of action. Matt, you're a young person and you are clearly uh, deeply involved in the amount of food that we waste, the impact it has on the environment, the impact it has on climate change. Uh, we are seeing more and more young people get involved in this battle. How important is it for youth around the world to get involved? I think it's absolutely essential. Um, luckily, I see a lot of the older generations also getting involved, but it's true. The youth are going to be on planet Earth much longer. They've yet to have children. Many I'm not even sure if they want children, which I think is, is a shame. Uh, but I think it's just it is so important to get as many people on board because this this the environmental and social issues impact us all. And I think in the global north where, you know, we are privileged, we have a massive responsibility to take action because historically and today, we, we, we must change uh, our systems to make it much more equitable because at the moment it's people in, in the so-called global south who are having uh, the greatest impact from climate change and other environmental impacts when they have done the least amount. So I'm delighted to see so many youth getting involved uh, and, it's, and it's fantastic and it gives me hope. Matt, thanks for joining us. And that's where we have to leave it. I'm Arnold Nadu in Washington, D.C. Thanks for watching.